Today, I'll share how I built Agents, a CRUD simulation add-on for Blender using geometry nodes. We are going to create a simpler version of the add-on from scratch, and I'll show you exactly how to make it yourself. But if you want to learn more, you can buy Agents, and not only will you get the full add-on to be studied and used in your project, you'll also get the Blender file we create in this video, with a clean labeled node tree which is perfect for learning. So what makes the CRUD simulation we are going to create unique? Mainly three things. First, it includes an animation state system, despite geometry node current limitations with animations. Each character can compute their optimal path to an objective autonomously, and they do so while avoiding other characters. I will explain how I achieved all that, but let's first start with a quick story. It all began with an interest in Fizarum simulations, also known as slime mold simulations. When Blender introduced simulation zones, I decided to develop my own implementation of the effects. This project taught me a lot and quickly led to creating an ant colony simulation using similar principles. The success of the ant simulation sparked a question, could I create a crowd simulation in Blender geometry nodes? When I say CRUD simulation, I mean agent-based CRUD simulation, hence the name of the add-on I made, Agent. You'll also hear me use the word agent to describe the entities of the simulation. From now on, we'll reserve the word character for the instance mesh on each agent, so basically the visual part of the simulation. First, we start with points, positions in 3D space. One point equals one agent. For precise control over the agent's initial positions, I decided on a vertex-based placement using a spawner object. This effectively converts the mesh vertices into the agents. We can manipulate the spawner object to control their number and spawn positions. Each point stores a few attributes, which is just a fancy way of saying that you attach some data to them. While all agents share the same attributes, their value vary per agent. Let's start with a direction attribute, a vector defining orientation, and a speed attribute, a float value defining movement speed. That's all we really need to make the agents move. We can add a simulation zone here, and every frame will offset the position of our points by the direction vector scaled by the speed attribute. Then, let's define a destination for our agents, a goal. Using the same approach as spawning, we assign goal positions using mesh vertices. Duplicating the spawner object makes this easy. Now we can set agent's goal based on the index. Let's now use these goal positions to drive the direction vector. We can compute the direction on each agent through a simple vector subtraction. Goal position minus agent position yields our basic direction vector. And let's normalize it so its length equal to 1. To achieve more natural movement, we initialize speed at zero and implement a clamped acceleration and deceleration as agents approach their goals. Now we can add visuals by instancing an animated character at the agent positions, with the instance orientation driven by the direction attribute. Voila! you have a basic crowd simulation. But of course there is a plethora of things to improve. To deal with the agents working in sync, we could duplicate the animated mesh and its armature a bunch of time and offset their animation manually. Then we randomize which mesh is instance for each agent. That would make them look asynchronous, but I have a better solution, which also takes care of linking the animation speed to the agent's movement speed. Blender's current limitations present an interesting challenge. Geometry nodes and the animation system operate independently. If you instance an animated mesh, you simply cannot modify the animation in any way. Unfortunately, there seemed to be no workaround. Or so I thought until I had an idea that was just dumb enough to work. Remember my ants simulation? Maybe we can take inspiration from that. 
For the ants, I created two static images of their body with legs in different poses and switched between them to create the illusion of movement. Very crude. But could we somehow apply this concept to 3D meshes? What if instead of instancing an animated mesh, we broke it down into multiple static meshes and just pick the mesh we need for each agent based on speed? So basically stop motion animation, but instead of clay, we use 3D meshes. All we have to do is bake the animated character into several static meshes and switch between them rapidly to create the illusion of movement. There is some drawbacks of course. At low speed the animation will look a bit choppy and new character variations will require their own baking as well. However, I was quite surprised at how well Blender handled the solution performance-wise. That's a walking animation solved. We can do the same for the idling animation and pick the mesh to instance based on time instead of movement speed. Okay, so now that we have essentially solved our animation problem, we can focus on the simulation. Our current implementation allows agents to pass through each other. They have no awareness of neighboring agents. Let's implement local avoidance while maintaining computational efficiency. We want agents to steer away from other close by and in front of them. To keep performance in check, we'll focus on detecting and responding to only one agent each frame. That's why we should offset the sampling position following the direction vector. This prioritizes detection of agents in their path of travel rather than the ones that could be behind or on the side. Now, we'll use two common mathematical operations, the dot product and the cross product. The dot product between our direction vector and the vector to the nearest agent determines if the sampled agent is in our forward cone. A value of 1 means he is directly in front of us and minus 1 means he is exactly behind us. Let's ignore values where the other agent is behind us or on our side. And multiply the avoidance strength by the dot product, so agents will turn more when avoiding another agent directly in front of them. We can also use the inverted distance as a multiplier, so the closer they are, the stronger the effect. We now know how much we should turn, but not in which direction yet. Using the same inputs as the dot product, we leverage the cross product's Z component sign to determine whether to steer left or right. So now, if the sampled agent is on the right, we'll turn left, and if he is on the left, we'll turn right to avoid them. Now that we know which way to turn, we can define the angle of rotation for our direction vector, and we are done. The agent's direction will be rotated as needed to avoid other agents, and because we only rotate a little bit, they will maintain overall passing while avoiding local collisions. As a final fail-safe, we implement a simple pushback for very close agents by applying a force scaled by half the penetration distance, assuming reciprocal response from both agents. You can think of this as a personal bubble. We've made huge progress, but there is still one big problem remaining. Our agents are just going in a straight line towards their goal, excluding the agent-to-agent -agent collision prevention, of course. If we added any non-walkable areas, like obstacles, they would just go right through them. We need something smarter. We need a... While pathfinding algorithms can get complex, Blender includes a helpful node called Shortest Edge Path, which uses the Dijkstra algorithm. This node essentially acts as a GPS navigation system for our agents. We'll need a nav mesh to define walkable and non-walkable areas. Deleting faces on the nav mesh allows us to add obstacles. As long as this mesh is dense enough, we can calculate the optimal path for each agent. The initial implementation is straightforward. Input agent positions and their goals iterate through agents and generate optimal passes. However, there is a problem. It only outputs a pass with the least amount of edges, completely ignoring lengths. To fix this, we can modify the edge cost of the pathfinder. What's the edge cost? It's an attribute assigned to the edges of the nav mesh. When the pathfinder evaluates the optimal pass, they consider the cost of each edge and will output the pass with the lowest overall cost. By default, all edge costs are equal to zero, but we can change this attribute and base it on certain edge characteristics. We'll add two for this tutorial. Edge length, which increase the cost for longer edges, 
and border proximity, which increase the cost for edges which are at the nav mesh borders to add a small margin next to obstacles. We now have paths, but the key challenge isn't generating the paths, it's making agents follow them naturally while maintaining local avoidance behaviors. Rather than constraining agents to exact pass positions, we should think about it as a discrete amount of positions, like waypoints, which I started calling leading positions in my implementation simply because that's what the agents will aim towards instead of the end goal. For this tutorial, since we simply compute the pass every frame, we only have to sample the second position on each curve to get the leading position. This creates smoother motion than if the agents were just stuck to their pass and allow for local collision avoidance while maintaining global pass adherence. And after some tweaking and refinements, we get a not so basic crowd simulation that can be used in a lot of scenarios. Now it's up to you to add more features and make it your own. And that's where I'll end my tutorial, but first let's add a basic shader variation. All we need to do is create a random number between 0 and 1 for each agent in geometry nodes and use that to drive a color ramp in the material. I hope you enjoyed seeing how we tackled some of the challenges. For a more advanced crowd simulation that is meant to be used by less technical artists, please check out Agents, link in the description. Do note that it is still in beta though with a few quirks I need to address. If you do get it, I'm interested in your feedback so please let me know your thoughts on the channel's Discord server, link in the description. If you are curious about related topics or have ideas for future videos, let me know in the comments. Also, tell me if you like this video format and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Blender and Geometry Nodes experiments. Au revoir.